Now peasants come in all shapes and colors, and a lot got arrested in the past. Cause the sheriff and his posse be profiling, cause we of the lowest social caste. So all I got to say to you, flea bitten, plague ridden, surf so blindly acquiescent. When an angry mob is forming, what the fuck wilt thou do? Damn, it feels good to be a peasant. Mm. It's Monday, August 7th, 2017. This is the Dissident Peasant Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff the Dissident Peasant. On today's show, Mueller Watch continues. The grand jury forms and the return of the all-white jury complaint. We'll talk about that. Trump's crowing about the economy needs some serious pushback. I'm here to give that to you. Also on today's show, you reap what you sow. Minnesota mosque bombing occurred just a few hours ago as of this recording. And finally, the dissident peasants' thoughts on the class versus identity direction debate on the Democratic Party as a member of the South. I'll give you my perspective. I'm Jeff the Dissident Peasant. Thanks for joining us today on the wee hours of the morning. Folks, you can go to dissidentpeasant.com. You can check out all my stuff there. That's headquarters. That's where you could find links to the Facebook page, to my Twitter, to the YouTube, to everything and anything Dissident Peasant related. So please, if you want to go there, go there. Check it out. Okay, first story today, we got another episode of Mueller Watch. What's Mueller up to? What's he doing? Well, Mueller's formed a grand jury, (laughs) Uh, which is a significant step in seeking an indictment of someone. Um, If you need to brush up on some of the basics of your law 101, grand juries uh, typically uh, hand down indictments uh, towards people. Prosecutors, in some cases, can... uh, indict people for crimes by themselves, but for many crimes, you need a grand jury uh, to indict. More immediately important uh, for this story is that grand juries also issue subpoenas for testimony and evidence. And they receive that testimony under oath. So you cannot lie to a grand jury if you are called before them, and if you are issued a legally binding subpoena, you need to comply. Uh, or else you're in violation of the court and a judge can send you to jail for contempt. Uh, So we're probably going to see uh, some subpoenas be going out, who knows, maybe this week, maybe next week, soon, soon. Uh, This is an active criminal investigation. It is not a counterintelligence uh, thing. Whoever's spinning that narrative over at the mainstream media needs to get off their rocker. Uh, no, he's looking for crimes. Uh, we know he's been looking for crimes. Uh, he's been looking. They're easy to find, right? Trump is not uh, very careful about covering his tracks. He's a pretty sloppy uh, manager, <laughs> if you can't tell by his style of leadership in the White House. Um, and uh, people should keep in mind that this is this. We're we're not a long way from learning. You know, whether or not Trump broke any laws, whether or not there's an indictment handed down against him or his associates, family, or whatever. Uh, Either way, whether or not there is never any indictments, let's say the investigation ends tomorrow, uh, Trump has broken the law. We know he's broken the law. Uh, If he took a meeting with that 
a Russian agent and they attempted to get Oppa research from them. They attempted to receive an item of value from an agent of a foreign government. That's one of the few campaign laws we still have in this country. You can't take contributions uh, either in kind or monetarily from foreign governments. So if that's what they did, and it certainly looks like they tried to, uh, then they attempted to commit a felony and probably could be uh, busted for conspiracy charges. Yeah, He's also openly obstructing justice in public, and um, I think somebody said the word emolument. I'm not sure. I heard the word emolument whispered in my ear, uh, but now I'm being told that I don't need to go into the emoluments clause because, hey, why beat a dead horse? The guy is guilty. We know he's guilty. I don't need Bob Bueller to tell me that Trump is guilty, and you shouldn't either. Uh, all that being said, we're all entitled to due process, even if you're a scumbag orange wannabe fascist. And uh, so I look forward to the conclusion of this matter and hopefully seeing him in jail. Um, but even though I look forward to that, I'm not necessarily counting on that happening because I think that this brings Mueller closer to getting fired. Um, if Nixon, uh, who was far more mentally stable than Donald Trump, uh, could order the firing of the prosecutor in charge of Watergate in order to save his own skin at the last minute, I have no doubt that Trump will do so once they start to come after him or his family. And when that happens, uh, we all have to hope against hope that the GOP finds a bit of principle left in them and they do something about that and they begin impeachment proceedings. Uh, but uh, I wouldn't hold your breath. I don't think that's going to happen. And when they don't, when that doesn't happen, if I'm right about all this, uh, and I pray that I'm wrong, uh, then we need to be ready to get in the streets. That's all I'm saying. We need to get ready to be in the streets. We need to be ready to make noise. That's not okay. It's not okay. Uh, either the law is king or the king is law. That's the American way, so to speak. Okay, next up on the show, uh, there was a presidential decree issued on Thursday, the 3rd, by our great and glorious orange leader. Quote, at some point, the fake news will be forced to discuss our great jobs numbers. Strong economy, success with ISIS, the border, and so much else. End quote. That's the end of that particular presidential decree. I hope you guys all have your Twitter alerts set. Uh, I think that strange men might come to your door and have pointed questions for you if you don't have your Twitter alert set uh, to buzz every time the president issues a proclamation. These are official presidential statements. The White House press secretary told me so, and that guy's a public servant. Anyway, let's not get off track. Trump's been pointing to the economy and saying, hey guys, look, everything's great. Look, unemployment's below 5%. Inflation's low. Stock market's added trillions of dollars in value. It's great. It's great. Everything's great. The economy's great. I am great. We're making America great, and it is all me, 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 me. Now, watch me hit this drive. Um, he needs to do that because he's floundering. His approval rating is in the 30s or in falling. Uh, might even be his 20s, depending on which way you look, uh, which poll you look at. But anyway, he's desperate. He's desperate for something to point to that he can say. And, and look, it's true. If I if you go outside right now, it's not a smoldering crater uh, where the local grocery store used to be. There are still a few jobs out there uh, that you can find, and people are still living. And that's good as far as it goes. Um but the problem is, is it doesn't go very far. Yeah, I say that too much. But it doesn't go very far, uh, right? Because those jobs are lower paying than ever, right? The stock market's added a ton of value. More than half of Americans have zero dollars in the stock market. And uh, most of the rest of the little people with stock uh, market savings in it are from their employer, uh, 401k plans. And it's money they can't touch until they're in their 60s. Uh, and they have no control over it, so... It, uh, the ups and downs of the stock market don't really affect the vast majority of people, so I consider it basically a meaningless statistic. Furthermore, wages haven't budged, barely at all. They've barely budged. Uh, they inch up a here, bit here and there, uh, depending on what month you look at, but they have nowhere near come close to replenishing the vast uh, gains that were not achieved in the previous eight years of recovery. They have a lot of catching up to do on wages. 
And uh, though the unemployment rate is quite low, the labor force uh, participation rate is uh, actually extremely low, alarmingly low. I would say, considering the society that we live in, and uh, if I may anticipate some objections, it's not just due to aging baby boomers. If you control for that, U.S. participation in the labor market is actually still lower than um, it would be otherwise. Um, this is not a normal economy, so to speak. It's a new normal economy uh, where you're a peasant. And there are a few courtiers and mid-level professionals belonging to guilds, right, uh, who make a good living. And other than that, you are one of them, or you are a lord and king, or you are a peasant, like me. And you can either be dissident, or you can not, or uh, you can acquiesce. Uh, I choose dissidents, uh, because I love my country, and I don't want to be a peasant. I want to be a citizen again. But in any case, I don't want to get off track. I just want to point out that Trump's crowing about the economy is complete bullshit. <laughs> the economy is actually not doing that well. Uh, all these articles that have headlines like, Economy emerges as a bright spot for Trump and the Hill, uh, for example. That's from like two months ago, of course. Uh, I don't really agree with that. The economy hasn't been good for the vast majority of people for a really long time. It's not a bright spot. It's just a spot that he hasn't reduced to a smoldering pile of rubble. It, you know, that's great. You didn't blow something up. <laughs> Give him time, folks. We're, it's only August. <laughs> um, but even if the economy was good, uh, you know, what's he got to do with it, right? Gotta watch TV and plays golf all day. What's he done to help the economy? Put Steve Mnuchin in charge of the Treasury? I don't think that did it. <laughs> Hypothetically speaking, what did he do? Nothing. They don't have answers for this. They just need something to point to when your approval rating is in the 30s. And the guy is freaked out by this Russia stuff. And he's freaked out that he's failing so hard. He really thought it, being president would be easy. I really do think that. He, he thinks it's like being a reality television host. You come in, you're charismatic, you make speeches, you have big rallies, you fire people. It's drama. It's compelling. People love it. It's not a way to run a country, dude. Not a way to run a country. You got no business being president. Hey, you're on vacation right now, Trump. Uh, why don't you just not come back? Just don't come back, man. Just stay uh, in New Jersey at your golf course and uh, issue a letter that says you resign. Yeah, just do that. Do that. Uh, the nation might even be grateful enough to reduce your inevitable prison sentence, which you definitely deserve, even if you resign. Let's take a little trip back in time right let's take a quick jaunt back to december 8th 2015 then candidate trump uh, wants to read us a statement let's hear what he has to say shall i read you the statement uh yes dude please go i said go donald j trump is calling for now listen you gotta listen to this one because this is pretty I, we, I'm listening. We're listening. I'm giving you a little bit of time just this once to illustrate a point. Can you please go? Pretty heavy stuff, and it's common sense, and we have to do it. Remember the poll numbers, 25%, 51%. Remember the poll numbers. Okay, so remember this. So listen. Time-traveling peasant here. I feel confident in saying that nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about. I thought you were going to read a statement. Can you please read a statement? Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. I have zero trouble believing that Donald Trump needed that sentence written on paper. There is a great hatred toward Americans by large segments of the Muslim population. Oh, well, then if they hate us, I guess, you know, destroy them, right? They want to change your religion. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Not going to happen. Oh, so they're, they've declared a holy war on us? Oh, my God. Until we are able to determine and understand this problem and the dangerous threat it poses, our country cannot be the victim of horrendous attacks by people that believe only in jihad. That's right. Instead, we're going to be the victim of attacks 
from people who believe in nothing but making America great again. The Dar al Farouk Islamic Center in suburban Minneapolis, like many other mosques, occasionally receives threatening calls and emails, but leaders say they're more frightened after a weakened attack in which an explosive shattered windows and damaged a room as worshippers prepared for morning prayers. Uh, no one was hurt in the blast, which happened around 5 a.m. on Saturday. Yep, that's America. That's uh, that's going to be the kind of terrorism that we're victim to instead, right? Oh, except Muslim terrorism also hasn't gone away. Now we just have different, newer, different, wider, different, wider, different, wider kinds of terrorism. Um, you reap what you sow. You do. You reap what you sow. And, uh, you know, while I'm not willing to throw in with the crazy postmodernists on the right, I will admit that words have a lot of power in changing people's perceptions. And when you're a candidate for president of the United States, your words matter a lot. Millions of people listen to them. They believe in them. They'll feel encouraged or discouraged by what you say. And doubly, triply, quadruply so if you're the president of the United States. Uh, People will listen to you because of who you are and the office that you hold, and they're going to take your word seriously, even if you're an orange shit given who lies all the time. Some people are going to take you seriously. And when you say that Muslims are scary and Muslims are evil and Muslims are a threat to you and they believe in nothing but jihad against Americans, um, that encourages attacks like this that happen. Uh, we here at the Distant and Peasant, while we are concerned with class consciousness, are not unconcerned with matters of religious tolerance in this country. And uh, we greatly regret what happened on Saturday. Uh, we're glad everyone was okay. We hope the perpetrators are brought to justice soon. And uh, we also hope that the criminal occupying the office of the President of the United States, who's uh, aiding and abetting, metaphorically speaking, these terrorists, by encouraging them to attack evil Muslims who believe in nothing but jihad and are a threat to the American way of life. I hope he's brought to justice too. All right, finally on today's show, a little family powwow, Democrats gather around kind of deal. We're going to speak as a family amongst friends. There's been a lot of debate in the Democratic Party about how to move forward after the 2016 loss. Things not looking good at the state level, obviously, or at the national level. Uh, the state level, I think Democrats control the governorship and the legislature in about six states. Republicans control more than 30. They have unified control. They have unified control of the Congress and the presidency. And the Supreme Court is locked down now with Gorsuch. Um, well, it was pretty locked down before Anthony Kennedy's uh, pretty highly conservative, so he votes with them a lot of stuff. They lose uh, one more justice, so liberal or Anthony Kennedy-ish, uh, and they really will have absolute power in this country. Uh, so Democrats got to stop that, man. We got to stop that. We got to stop that. We don't want to be a one-party fascist state. Uh, so what are we going to do? Well, um, there are a lot of people uh, in the Democratic Party. I was going to say on the left, and I want to stop myself. <laughs> in the Democratic Party who um who are concerned that you know a renewed focus on class consciousness like Bernie Sanders campaign which caught on fire out of nowhere uh demonstrates a great deal of hunger for um we got to be careful about that uh we don't want to be too radical and we don't want to abandon our calls for racial justice and gender equality and um and there are others who are, are even less generous in the Democratic Party who basically say, I don't hate poor people. I just don't want to pay myself to make sure they don't starve. So don't raise my taxes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so those people, if they don't want to vote for Republicans, and I want to encourage them to do so, honestly. But if they don't want to do that, they need to bend the knee right to the left. Uh, the center has discredited itself, both in terms of its campaign operation and in terms of the way it's governed the last 20 years. The center cannot hold. We've got to either go left or right, and we see what right looks like. So let's try left. And by left, I mean embracing economic populism. 
Now, look, you don't have to abandon racial equality or be pro-life or anything like that. Like, we, I'm not saying we need to abandon those positions or really, you know, if you want a litmus test as a Democrat and you don't want to vote for anybody who's not pro-life, I feel you. And I respect that. I really do. In the primary, of course, in the general, you should support the Democrat uh, with very few exceptions. Um but you don't have to choose. There's a dual track here. And uh, not to get too personal, but, you know, the dissident peasant lives deep in the heart of Trump country in Georgia, um, in a little suburb town. And uh, so I've lived among a lot of Trump voters for a long time. A lot of Southerners who vote Republican, white Southerners, as a part of their tribal identity. And I got to tell you, there. It is a crack. There's a crack. You can get in there because these people live in states run by Republicans. Republicans don't care about governing or their citizens, so they inevitably do a crap job whenever they're elected to office. These people, because they live under crap government, think that government is capable of doing nothing but crap. And rightly or wrongly, I'd say largely wrongly, uh, they think the Democratic Party is the party for gays, party for blacks, party for immigrants, Muslims, and other minorities, not for white people. They don't need the Democratic Party. That's all they ever campaign on. That's all they ever talk about is gender equality and affirmative action. That's all they ever hear about. Now, look, I'm not saying the Democratic Party, that's what they run on everywhere. That would be silly. I'm not accusing them of that. The right's uh, complicit in a lot of that messaging. But I'm just saying, like, this kind of thing doesn't seem that hard to me. Do you support affirmative action programs, hypothetical Democrat running in the South? Well, yes, I do, but really I'm running to bring back prosperity to the entire nation, so here's my new minimum wage bill. Here's my new jobs plan. You know, you just turn it around. You're here for everyone, right? You don't need to abandon racial equality. You don't need to abandon women's issues or uh, reproductive health, I should say. It's not a woman's issue. It's a woman's right to choose, and family planning access helps men, men too. I'm sorry. Uh, I should say, women's reproductive health, Planned Parenthood, stuff like that. Don't need to shut that down. Don't need to give that up. Don't have to give that up. Not in the least most places. You don't have to win all these white people. You don't. You don't even have to win a lot of them. Or you just have to win a few of them. And a few more, you have to make them waver. Waver enough that they'll stay home on election day instead of going out and pulling the Republican lever. Right? You do that, and you can blow open the map in a lot of places. And uh, it's really the only choice that we have forward, right? Like, the center is so discredited. when We can't possibly think that another, like, resume candidate like Hillary Clinton, competent steward of a broken system, vote for me. Nobody wants that. I'm sorry. Like, I voted for her. I wanted her to win. I was disappointed when she didn't. But really, we need way more radical change than Hillary Clinton was ready to deliver to us in this country. And we've needed it for a long time. So we can't go that way. And obviously, we can't go right because, oh, my God, have you seen those guys? <laughs> so left populist is the only way to go. It's the only way left. Um, we don't have a choice. It's either that or consign the modern democratic party to the dustpin of history and as somebody who doesn't like to shit on democrats and call the democratic party useless that's saying a lot because i don't want the democratic party to go to the dustpin of history i want it to be a vibrant party of the future who leads america out of this darkness right and the only way we're going to do that is with 50 dollars minimum wage with guaranteed paid leave child care subsidies health care we got to do this stuff. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. Because if we don't, if you don't give at least some of these white people living in the South and in the Midwest something that's going to make them waver, a few of them to vote for you and a few of them to stay home, we're not going to have a choice. We're not going to win. That's the only way to win. I should tell you, also, it's a two-pronged strategy. Right? You chip away at the other guy a bit with this. You also motivate and energize the democratic base and that's hard to do not because the democratic base is lazy and doesn't like to vote and this idea that you know they're all just a bunch of shiftless 
poor people who, you know, it's hard to motivate them, especially in off-year elections, to get out and vote. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. That's, that's, not, that's not what's keeping people to vote. It's hard to vote in this country. It takes a lot of time, okay? Registering, depending on whether or not you have a driver's license, is next to impossible. You know, it's really difficult in this country in most places to vote. And doubly, triply, quadruply, quintuply so in Republican-run states. Uh, state of Georgia recently, just this past month, uh, sent out purge notices, 300,000 voters in the state because uh, they didn't vote in the last election. <laughs> Or they uh, didn't respond to a random government piece of mail in their mailbox. So, uh, yeah, this idea that the Democratic base, you know, is lazy and can't get up and vote is nonsense. They're suppressed somewhat, and they're also depressed, right, by a Democratic Party who seems to have forgotten all about them. I started courting upper middle class uh, professionals in terms of uh, the types of campaign they run, like socially liberal. And uh, don't raise my taxes a damn bit because uh, I may not ho- hate poor people, but I sure as hell don't want to pay for them to eat. All right, folks, that about does it for me today. I was your host, Jeff, the Distant Peasant. Thanks for joining me. You can always go to distantpeasant.com. You can check out all my stuff there. There's some words, sometimes accompanied by pictures. There's some links to information. Twitter handles there, Facebook pages there, YouTube pages there, support me pages there. You can check all that stuff out at distantpeasant.com. You don't have to. Nobody's going to make you. I'm not going to make you. I, it would make me happy, though, if you did. If you went there and you looked, that would be cool. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, I really appreciate everybody supporting this show. If you want to support this show, don't forget to like this video, share this video, comment on this video. Right? Uh, I'm really just trying to build an audience right now. And if I get a big enough audience, then I'll put a webcam on and uh, actually try to do a real talk type show. Last question, or last thing, I should say. Uh, the Professional Left Podcast is celebrating its 400th episode. Drift Guys and Blue Gal will probably never listen to this because they are far too busy to listen to my podcast. But if they're not, Drift Guys, Blue Gal, thanks for all you do. Happy 400th episode. I really appreciate it. Folks, if you don't know who the professional left is, go to proleftpodcast.blogspot.com. You can check them out. Uh, they're great. Blue Gal blogs at Crooks and Liars and has a blogspot site, I believe. Drip Glass is at dripglass.blogspot.com. They're your hosts for that show, and they're fantastic. Happy 400th episode, guys. For them and everyone else, one more thing. Don't forget, stay distant, surfs. This is for Bernie, he's the only candidate, it makes any sense. From the country to the town, police on buses have us down. But I had to stand when the ground was laid, got it tough on you, you were made. Well, then the king woke up one morning. Said all the people should be better paid no. Things were bad, things got changed Bloody tough on Union Man Bloody tough on Union Man One long struggle day by day That's how we got to be this way Bloody tough on Union Man We're still up to live like humans Locked our feet man to fame no one said it was gonna be easy But it's tough on you, you know Towers, bridge, and trailers still But that's what ever happened here But don't forget as the future fight But it's tough on you, you know Well, when it's tough on you, you know One long struggle day by day That's how we got to be this way But it's tough on you,